Hey guys, this is Mrs. Budishan here. Uh, we are going to look at our AKS portfolio, Force and Motion for 8A. This is only going to be part one. Okay, so look for part two next. Um, this says, I can plan and carry out investigations and analyze the motion of an object using mathematical and graphical models. So part A will, um, part one will be all about the mathematical and part two will be about graphical. Okay, so before we even get into your portfolio, you need to understand the basics. A force is a push or a pull on an object, okay? So if you look right here um, at our object, you can see that there's forces associated with it. So forces are measured in Newtons. That's what the N stands for. So you can see there's a force up and down, and they are equal forces to Newtons, and they are opposite. Because they're equal and opposite, they balance out. They like cross each other out and they don't count. In other words, that object is not really moving up or down because it's have, have equal amount of force applied to both sides, right? Now, if you look left and right, you can see it's also balanced. There's five Newtons going to the left. There's five Newtons going to the right. Because of this, our entire object is not in motion right now. It's just a balance force okay so the net force meaning once you add them up it's going to be zero okay <clears throat> if you look at this bottom example you can see we have a book and this book is being pushed to the right by 18 newtons and to the left by 20 newtons so if i take that net force and see what they are when the forces actually combine together i can see that my net force is two newtons to the left okay um, I know it's 2 because, well, I can subtract them, right? 20 minus 18 is 2. And I know which direction it's going because the bigger number always wins the direction. So in this case, 20 is the bigger number, and the 20 arrow is pointing to the left, so I know my answer is going to be to the left, okay? <clears throat> if you look at this one, you can see um, we have a book again, and we have two forces, and they're both going to the right. One's eight newtons and one's six newtons. So all we have to do there is add them up because they're in the same direction, okay? So once we add those up, it gives us 14 newtons. Because they're both going to the right, it's still going to the right as well, okay? Now on your worksheet, you have these to complete. <clears throat> we are going to go over how to do each one of them. You're asked to give whether it's balanced or unbalanced, and then state the net force and the direction. Okay, so if we look at number one, we can see that there's 20 newtons going to the left and right, up and down, all equal and all opposite. Therefore, it is balanced, and my net force then is zero newtons, okay? My second one, if I look right and left, I can see that 40 newtons to the right, 10 newtons to the left. So I'm definitely going to be moving to the right, my bigger number. Um, it always wins out, remember, for direction. So I'm going to be moving to the right by 30. Because these are opposite directions, I have to subtract them, right? So 40 minus 10 is 30. Up and down are both 20. So up and down is balanced, but left and right is not. Because any part of this is unbalanced, the whole thing is considered an unbalanced, okay? <clears throat> Over here, we have two things that are unbalanced. Right and left, you can see we have 20 and 30. Um, bigger number always wins direction, so it's going to be moving to the left by 10 because 30 minus 20 is 10. And then up and down, um, which one wins out? It's going to be the bigger number 40 is going to be the winner for it's going to move up. And it's going to move up by 30 because I have to subtract 40 by 10. Okay. <clears throat> Make sure you add your N for Newtons at the end of your force. Number four, um, you can see right and left, bigger number is 50, so my object's going to move to the right by how many 30? 50 minus 20 is 30. <clears throat> Up and down, bigger number is down. 100 minus 50 is 50. It's 50, not 60. Ha, caught a typo. There we go. It's 50. Number five, um, you can see right and left. Up and down are all the same, 25 newtons. Therefore, it is balanced and I have zero newtons, okay, for my net force. Last one, number six, right and left. My, um, uh, my force going left is bigger. Therefore, my object will be going left 
and I subtract that. So 60 minus 10 gives me 50. And then my up and down direction are the same, 20 and 20. So it's balanced up and down, but unbalanced right and left. Therefore, the entire thing is still considered to be unbalanced. <clears throat> the next thing on your sheet, it says um, three different math problems. And we're going to work through each math problem separately. So this math is pretty simple, you guys, okay? Um, it says, suppose you ran two kilometers in 10 minutes. What was your speed? First thing you have to know is a speed formula. So speed equals distance divided by time, or S equals D divided by T. That's what that stands for, okay? So all I have to do is substitute S equals speed. I replace my distance from my equation, two kilometers, with the time T, 10 minutes, and I'm gonna divide that in my calculator and I get 0.2. Now the harder part is knowing how to do your units because your units will change. Sometimes it'll be kilometers per second, kilometers per minute, meters per second, hour, uh, miles per hour, whatever. Um, but this is the easy way to do it, watch. We did distance divided by time. Keep it in the same order. Kilometers divided by minutes, kilometers, per minute. Do you guys see that? It's the same math that you did. We just rewrote it over here, okay? That's the easiest way to remember your units. <clears throat> Story number two. It says, a car is traveling, let me move on any right, there you go. A car is traveling 50 kilometers for two hours heading west. Find the velocity. Velocity is pretty much the same thing as speed. Um, with the exception is you have to add a direction to your answer. That's the only difference. The way you find the answer is the same. The numerical answer is the same. You just have to add some words at the end for direction. So we still have distance divided by time, but now we're going to add the direction. So if we substitute in, so velocity equals our distance from our word problem, it's 50 kilometers is our distance divided by our time t is two hours. So I'm putting that in there for two hours. Divide that in my calculator. And I get 25. Now my units are the same way as I do speed. I'm just going to rewrite them in the same order. Kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour. Do you guys see that? And then I'm going to put a direction. So it told me it's heading west. So I need to make sure I add that to the end of my math answer. Okay. And that is how you find velocity. <clears throat> Last one is um, number three. It says a jet starts from rest on a runway and reaches a speed of 80 meters per second in 20 seconds. What is its acceleration? Well, you first have to know the formula for acceleration. So I wrote it here for you. A is for acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So this little F next to the V stands for final or where it ends, right? And the little I stands for initial or where it starts. So if I'm reading through this, I need to get all of my components, right? The easiest one is seconds. Seconds is time. That's easy, okay? So we can substitute T for our 20 seconds. No big deal. But now we need to know our starting velocity, which we call initial, and our finishing velocity, which we call final, right? Well, it says a jet starts from rest. Rest means it's stopped and not moving. So that's going to be zero. So where we see initial velocity, we can put in zero meters per second. And it reaches a speed of 80 meters per second. So it was at zero, and then it eventually reached a speed of 80 meters per second, which means that's where it ended up being. That was its final velocity. So I have to start with that number first. I know it seems backwards, right? We're not going initial minus final, we're going final minus initial. So you have to do it in that order or you're gonna get your answer incorrect, okay? So do your final first. So 80 meters per second minus the zero what we started at, divided by however much time you have, in this case, 20 seconds, um, if you plug all that in your calculator, you're going to get four. Well, what's the units? This is acceleration, and there's a whole lot of units going on there, so it's really confusing. Um, what the units are are meters per second squared. 
okay? So we're still doing the meters per second, but because we have um, another second in there, it's really meters per second times second, we end up just putting a square at the top um, so we don't have to write meters per second times second. It's just easier to write it that way, okay? So whenever you see that squared, it's on the S. That squared is not on the four. So you don't have to square the four, nothing like that. This is your final answer, okay? And that squared is just talking about multiplying the S by another S, that's it, okay? Um, so when you see a square, you know it's referring to acceleration. Okay, now you're given two different um, scenarios. We're gonna talk about each one. So the first scenario says, describe how to find the velocity of a tennis ball going downhill. <clears throat> we have a tennis ball, it's going downhill. Um, we need to do distance divided by time plus a direction. Our direction is easy, it's going down the hill and that's a direction, north, south, east, west, up, down, left, right, all of those are direction. Downhill is a direction, we're good, right? Now let's focus on the math part, the distance. Well, I can measure from where the tennis ball starts to where the tennis ball finishes, and I can see how many meters that was, so I can do that. And then I would have to see how long that took. So from the starting place to the finishing spot that I just measured that distance, I would have to get a stopwatch and measure it. Then I could take those numbers and I could divide, and I could get my answer that easily. The second one says, describe how to find the acceleration of a boat when it starts at rest and travels until it reaches the full speed. So we're gonna use our equation, um, acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. And it tells us the boat starts at rest. So we already know our in initial velocity is zero and we need to know um, the acceleration as it reaches full speed. So we're gonna start our boat stopped and we're going to start our timer right because we need to know how long this takes for our time and we're going to start to floor it right we're going to go all the way on um on our little pedal and make the the boat go just as quickly as we possibly can the throttle and um as the boat continues on as it reaches its top speed when that occurs and it can't get any faster we need to stop the top this timer and we need to record that time we also need to record how fast that was. So that's our final velocity. So from there, we would subtract our final velocity minus zero, what we started at, and divide it by what time we had. And that's it. Then we would have our acceleration. So this was part one of 8A, you guys. Okay, so go ahead and watch part two next.